So a guy walks into a restaurant with a full-grown ostrich behind him. Sits down, the waitress takes her order, he says I'll have a hamburger, fries, and a Coke. Turns to the ostrich, ostrich says, I'll have the same. Shortly later, the waitress returns with the orders and says that'll be 1840. Guy reaches into his pocket without looking and pulls out the exact amount of change for the payment. The next day, the guy and the ostrich come back again and the guy asks for a hamburger, fries, and Coke. The ostrich says, I'll have the same. And the guy once again reaches in his pocket and pulls out the exact amount of change and puts it on the table. This becomes routine until one night the guy and the ostrich enter the restaurant and the waitress says the usual. The guy says, nah, it's Friday night. I think I'll have a steak, a baked potato, and a beer. The ostrich says, I'll have the same. She brings the food with the bill for $46.62. Once again, the guy pulls out the exact amount of change out of his pocket and puts it on the table. The waitress can't hold back her curiosity any longer and she says, excuse me, sir, how do you keep pulling the exact amount of change out of your pocket every single time? Well, the guy said, several years ago, I was cleaning out my attic and I came across an old lamp. I rubbed it and out popped the genie. He granted me two wishes. My first wish was that anytime I needed to pay for anything, I'd just reach in my pocket and the money would be there. The waitress is like, that's brilliant. Most people would wish for a million dollars or something, but you'll be as rich as you want for as long as you live. He's like, that's right. No matter if it's a gallon of milk or a Rolls Royce, the exact amount of money will always be there. The waitress has to ask though, but sir, what's with the ostrich? The guy says, my second wish was for a tall chick with long legs that agrees with everything I say. What's up everybody, Anthony Serratelli here of Jersey Filmmaker and today I want to talk about a couple microphones that you could possibly use for vlogging and that ridiculously long intro was just to show a comparison of the two. Just to be fair, these may or may not be the best ones out there, but they're two that I own that I can compare for you, that I like the quality of both of them, so I'm going to do so. So over here we have the Rode Video Micro Compact that goes for about $56 on B&H and on this side we have the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus which goes for $300. Taking a look here at the Video Micro, this is what it comes with. It's very simple. It comes with a nice windshield that you can pop right on and off. The microphone itself, which is made of aluminum, so it's a nice solid quality. An on-camera mount, which acts as a shock mount as well. And then a three and a half millimeter jack on both ends of a TRS cable, which is stretchy and red and cool. And the Rode Video Mic also comes with its dual three and a half millimeter jack connector. The microphone itself, the camera mount, and the shock mount are all connected as one piece. That's how it comes. I haven't even tried to disassemble it, so that's one piece. And then it also comes with a rechargeable battery, and this thing lasts supposedly up to 100 hours. I haven't gotten it that far, but supposedly up to 100 hours of battery life on this battery. The Video Micro doesn't come with, nor does it need battery. It's powered by camera plug-in power, so all you need is this piece. You plug it in, turn on your camera, and go. The Video Micro is a cardioid condenser mic. The Video Mic Pro Plus is a super cardioid condenser mic. So they'll both limit the peripheral sound so that you can really focus on the subject sound in front of you, but the super cardioid doing a little bit better job at that. As for bells and whistles, the Micro really doesn't have any. It's really simple. You put it on, you plug it in, you go. I wouldn't say it captures better sound than your scratch audio does capture on your DSLR, but what it does is it narrows down the sound really well. So it's not changing the quality of the sound that your preamps capture, it's just again cutting out the peripheral sound and really focusing on your subject. And for $56, great deal. Now the Video Mic Pro Plus has a lot of bells and whistles, and for $300 it should. One of the coolest things it has that I'll start with is the automatic power function. It uses the camera's plug-in power to sense when the camera's on and when the camera's off, so it knows when to turn the mic on and turn the mic off, which is great because I had one of these originally, one of the older ones that used 9 volt batteries, and I can't tell you how many times I forgot to turn that off and I was changing batteries all the time, so this feature is awesome. There's a couple buttons on the back. The right button is a decibel setting. There's plus 20 decibels for cameras that might not have great preamps. There's a pad setting at negative 10 decibels if you have an input that's super loud, or you could just leave this in the off position, which is a flat setting for your higher quality preamps. On the left, there's a high pass filter, which cuts at 75 hertz and 150 hertz, which can prevent low end noise from being picked up, which is nice because this mic is kind of bassy to begin with. And one last feature that's very, very cool on this mic. Now, this is a mono microphone, so it records on the left and right channel simultaneously simultaneously, but if you push the power and decibel buttons at the same time, it enables a safety feature, which will record the right track just a little bit lower than your original left track setting. So if you happen to peak, you're gonna have that safety track on the right side, which for vloggers is really important because it's hard to monitor your own sound when you're recording yourself, so kudos on that. So before I tell you which one I think is better for vlogging, which may sound like an easy decision, let's do one more test. All right, I found a fairly noisy place to test the Scratch Audio, the Video Micro, and the Video Mic Pro Plus. 
All right, I found a fairly noisy place to test the scratch audio, the Video Micro, and the Video Mic Pro Plus. All right, I found a fairly noisy place to test the scratch audio, the Video Micro, and the Video Mic Pro Plus. Too cold. So if I had to choose just one, I would of course choose the Video Mic Pro Plus. It has much more functionality, a deeper sound, which I like, but it's $300. This one's $56, so this one's almost six times as much. This mic does a great job. And honestly, I think it sounds better in some situations, so I might want to evaluate what I'm doing that day to help me decide which one to use. But the title of this video is Best Vlogging Mic, and this is the best vlogging mic out there that I know of. It's the most popular, it's the most used. If you go around and watch a lot of vloggers on the YouTubes, you will see that this is what they're using. But please, don't overlook this mic, especially if you're a beginner. It's a great way to start, it does a great job. The Video Micro Compact is also a great vlogging mic. So that's all I got for today. I hope these tests were helpful. If you like this video, please click the like button, subscribe, and click the little bell so you can get alerts to all future episodes. If you have any comments or questions, of course, leave them below or contact me on any of my social medias, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, at Jersey Filmmaker. Thanks so much for watching, and please remember, don't wait, go create. I'll see you next time.